All right, hello. My name is Ice37, and this is my run of Hunter All Objectives in Rainworld Downpour. Downpour being the Rainworld DLC that has recently come out. Hard mode being a, a hunter being a hard mode where it's essentially a roguelike where we have a certain amount of cycles to do things. We're also streaming, so we have anvils falling from the sky. But <laughs> record video and stream at the same time. Surely it will go well. And why don't we just go into it and do the things. All objectives, as we go into it one piece at a time, is we have to do three specific things. We have to give the item we start with to one character, and then give it to another character, and then we have to finish the game as we normally would. And this green neuron we have in our hands is that item. And the two NPCs that we're going to be seeing are giant supercomputers as they are. Uh, we'll deal with that later. Essentially right now Hunter is a faster and stronger version of the normal slug cat character that we play as. Hello Lord MB. We're recording things. For some reason my virtual controller wasn't on there. I just turned it on so that's fine. How's it going? Good. I'm trying to record a video at the same time, so that's why I'm going to say things. Uh, one other thing about Hunter is that we can put a spear on our back, which will be very useful for certain situations, just where we need to carry multiple spears. I'm going to just carry this green neuron with us as we get to the first gate of the run. Currently, we've started in Farm Arrays, which is not the normal location we'd start in, and we're trying to get into Sky Islands. Also, Hunter is a base game character. This guy's a little concerning. However, we are playing with the Dalpor DLC enabled. Not too much is going to be different, but a lot of quality of life changes and a few other interesting things will show up, and I'll point them out as relevant. This was one of the best runs of the base game and only makes it more interesting now that there's a bunch of all small changes now with the DLC. Doing a fast pole climb here. I'm not the best at it, but I can do the base idea. So yes, how has been Hunter score running A and B? I have a feeling you're kind of in my boat where it just suddenly exists right now, but we haven't really done anything. Hello. And we're going through a gate. You need a certain amount of karma to go through it. We start with three, and then this loads another area. Accidentally did a wall pounce there. We'll talk about movement a little bit, though. And then karma, we'll talk about when we save here. For right now, we are in farm arrays, and we're trying to get an echo. Thank you, Mumika, for the shadow. Hmm. Shadowed me out on their channel. Why do I see these things? All right. Hopefully my alerts are working again. They weren't working yesterday. I think I fixed it, but I wouldn't be able to tell. The centipede there hopefully won't be too much of a bother. It wasn't. Very nice. Those guys don't actually aggro unless you're in the room with them for a while. Right now we're just climbing up Sky Islands. Also when it comes to this game, every creature uh, on a base level, just you considering it, is a one hit kill. Sending us back to the last point we've saved. Which right now we haven't saved yet. It's going to be a little while till we can. There's very little threats outside of the world actually killing us. This guy though. I need some food. You would do nicely. As Hunter, we eat meat, so eating other actual characters is our deal. Also means that very few places we would actually have problems with eating. Common lizard is common creature that we'll run into is a lizard. These are orange lizards here. Ooh, messed that up. Unfortunate. Score running sounds like both terrible and interesting at the same time. Yeah. It's... All right. We're gonna be approaching 
our first save of the game. We're also going to... Well, actually, we're not going to perform a certain glitch because we've always traditionally done this category as glitchless. However, because this is new on the DLC leaderboards, we may not care about that as much. Right now, I'm putting the neuron in my stomach. I might have not did that in time. Which I did not, but we'll worry about that in a second. Basically, you can store items in your stomach. I'm supposed to starve here. Um, you can store item, one item in your stomach, and we want this green neuron on the stomach so it's easier to carry. And then right now, we're going to starve. We need to be our, at our maximum karma right now, which is karma 5. We're at karma 4 right now. Every time you save the game, you go up in karma. Every time you die, you go down in karma. And then... You want a certain amount of food to rest. We need our six food. There's five food. I always forget the number. Decent bit of food to actually be able to rest properly as this character. And then we have three stored for later. But if we try to sleep with less amounts of food, we can still make it to the next cycle without having to actually eat the full amount of food but it does not save the game and gives us some other significant drawbacks which is our starving state which makes us much slower but all we need to do is get over here with our five karma now that starving has given us that extra little bit to actually get down here without having us go out of our way to actually eat more we get a one line of dialogue from this echo and then it'll send us along puts us back to the last point we saved it gives us our boost to our maximum karma we need four boosts to our maximum karma i'm going to put the neuron in our stomach now one little visual thing added now that you put things in our stomach that glow I actually have a small green glow coming from me very cool uh basic basic game function of rain world there's a rare pole plant spawn there if you grab that pole it, it kills you um another one there too interesting sorry i'm just seeing a lot of things that are happening but basic way this game works is that after a certain amount of time that was unfortunate that was also unfortunate but it doesn't matter we try to rush that part simply because we are right next to where we saved anyway. Oh no. Nano help. Oh, that's... Now it's slightly bad. But it should be fine. We don't want to die again. If we can help it. So scavengers can spawn anywhere. They're basically like... Can destroy him no yes destroy the bot <laughs> Ooh. scavengers are like monkeys they can do everything that you can do which is why they're so scary um, basic way the game works is that after a certain amount of time the rain will come and it will kill anything that's outside of a shelter and so we need to eat enough food to be actually be able to save an, a specific shelter. Shelters are only so many places. And that's the basic loop of the game. And then just to keep going and explore. But for Hunter, of course, we have very specific objectives for what we need to do. We're not just randomly... Um, walking around. Uh, we need to do this jump correctly because it's a very scary jump. I like to throw things. If you throw things in air, it sends you along a little bit farther. There's a white lizard there. That guy could be particularly annoying. We're gonna move these out of the way while I eat him. I'm gonna get this spear back real quick. Hello, Alex. And then talk about movement. Basic movement is that you can do a slide, jump out of a slide with a pounce, and then go into a roll because of the specific state that puts you in. 
You do roll in a few different methods. Ooh, that guy was a little annoying. And then... You can also add items to the mix on that. Or if you throw them, it sends you a bit farther. Or you can throw them backwards instead of jumping out of the slide when during a slide. I'd rather have a spear right now, but sometimes you need to sacrifice stuff for movement. Additionally, we use keyboard, or at least I'm using keyboard, that is using virtual controller to pretend that it's, I'll take this gear off here, um, pretend that it's a controller so that you can press a specific button that we've set to be a certain analog input down on a joystick so that we can have the access to do two very different roles to each other. Some can be used in very particular locations. We'll use one in just a second after this gate fully opens. Has propaganda gone too far? Yes. Not everyone uses keyboard. I wouldn't say keyboard's the, what you should use by any means. Just, it does make a lot of things easier to press one direction and then the other immediately. Alright, made it here. Not too much of a problem. It's not bad that we've died right immediately where we were twice. Because we just need to be at this karma level that we're currently at. Hello, Will. Never seen a speedrun on this game. Weren't you in the previous stream, though? You will see more speedruns. Even more. So, when it comes to Echoes, when it comes to this character, specifically Hunter, they will just always be there in their specified location, when for other characters, they're not always there, and you need to go to their location, prime them, essentially. They'll do a little flash, telling you that you've activated them, and then come back when you're at really high karma. Um, in our case, we just need to be at that really high karma, which is either at our maximum, current maximum karma, or really close to it. They're here. Thank you for the follow, Will. And my alerts started working again. Very cool. Alright. Uh, we'll talk about what echoes are as we can a bit later, but each one of these that we see are going to increase our maximum level of karma, and we need to get it to our absolute maximum, which is why we need to get it increased our full four times. Next, we're going to be seeing the first NPC we need to bring this neuron in our stomach to. And he will also give us a karma boost. He'll also give us five extra cycles, because we normally start with 20 cycles to do everything. How do you cycle, or should I say a low? Low wreck. Um, it also gives us five extra cycles on top of our 20. Yeah, that, that won't matter too much for the run. Um, because we'll complete this far before the base 20 will affect anything. Alright, that's a little scary when you get stuck upside down like that. Sometimes you can flip you off. No vultures showed up this time. Vultures are a giant bird in the sky. Um, they can sometimes show up. Very used to fighting those here. However, none of them showed up. That just happens. Creature spawns are consistent, but their behavior is not. Both on that each and every creature spawns with a certain amount of personality stats, depending on how they work. And their random decisions will also change what happens. Low Scaramouche. Vultures are birds in the sky, yes. There are two different kinds of them. One of them fires husks from their laser-guided sights that we'd rather not see. It's unfortunate that we didn't say that. We didn't see um, any vulture because if we get the chance to fight one and kill one, or at least wound it enough, we can take its masked face and wear it 
the scare lizards, which helps quite a lot here. Hello, random fandom. Get him here on the wall. Probably will not see him. Um, right now, we're going to be dealing with a lot of teal lizards that like to jump around, and white lizards, which are camo lizards with long tongues. Very used to dealing with this kind of situation, but this is one of the harder parts of the run. So we just got to see how this goes. Given that DLC makes the game load differently, normally we wouldn't actually be able to see this guy here because the next room hasn't actually loaded in him correctly. Those things kind of happen. Basic uh, combat is that you hit a hard-headed lizard with a rock and then flips around and you stab it in the back. Because Hunter has a spear in their back as well, you can throw the one in your hand and then the one in your back and hit them and then they'll die from two spear hits. For the small blue lizard here, it will just die in one. I'm going to not deal with this guy right now. There's the king vulture. The teal lizard went in and took the bait. Listening to what's going on is very important to know where all of the creatures are. The ones above us, especially. I'm not going to worry about that stick that I just stabbed him with. Once they're stabbed once, they're pretty helpless. Normally we do a skip up the right side of the wall, but I don't have a mask and I'm not willing to do that. What are the three red dots? Three. The dots on the bottom right now is for any area of the game, the more threat we are in, like creatures being around us, the higher the threat theme, which is a, so a layered song that will play. However, in this area, there is no layered song. I'm messing up this jump somehow. We need to use a spear here. Be able to climb up. Got to check for white lizards going forward. There are four of them. There's one. I did not see him, actually. Um, very particular strat to just have him fall down because they have difficulty climbing on the pole. Hello there. I threw that in the wrong order. But we got a stick here, so it doesn't matter. There was three of them there, and I only saw one? <laughs> Good thing they it's a long distance from you, but it worked out. When a creature bites you, like a common creature like a lizard, there's a chance that you die. Um, for each bite, it's about 33%. If you're holding something in your hands, you have a chance to react and then throw it so you're not just held. Because you can just be in a held state and you're just stunned constantly. For the most part, it's just hoping that when you do get bitten, you do not die instantly. Some characters don't have that trait. But we find it much better to just not get bitten at all. There's still a white lizard missing. It could be anywhere. There it is in a very bad location too. That's fine though. He's just kind of in the way. bring him backwards. It's really bad to see them in these pipes like this because there's very little that you can do. If he was facing towards us, it would be bad. They're generally set to not stay here, however. But sometimes it happens when they're moving through. We just gotta deal with them when it does. Alright. There's no more threats from this point on. We're just making it to Pebbles. So, now we get to talk about the game a little bit. One, talk about movement. I find this game very, very interesting because it's more like fighting game inputs and you need to actually really, really think about where and when you want to use things according to the terrain, the creatures, and otherwise, and you need to have the skill to actually um, accomplish these things. Like when it comes to path pole climbing, we'll be doing a lot of horizontal movement coming up as well as a very particular jump. 
When it comes to rolls, if you jump out of the roll right at the end of your roll, you will get a much higher jump than you normally would. That allows us to hit a spear up there, which is not normally possible. You can use two spears by throwing one down and then that second one, well, that, that one I just threw there, to be able to climb up. But we don't want to do that. I wasn't able to grab the spear that I put into the wall as I put it in the wall, which was unfortunate. But we were still able to get there. Um, some of this movement's a little awkward. We use the um, soft roll by me pressing the button to be able to do the small analog input down that do a lot of small bits of movement. Otherwise, there's just slides and then back throwing during the slides as well for movement on flat surfaces or up and down small slopes like these. So managing the items around you is very big deal. All objectives that mean dying to become a monster too are a syndic. So we are... It's going to be the three things that are in brackets at the statistics screen that we are getting. So giving this neuron the pebbles, giving this neuron the moon, and then ascending. So we have our two echoes ascending. So now we've actually just passed by an echo just a second there on the top of the wall before we actually got to the giant flat surface. Um, we're not going to get that because every time you get an echo you get set back to the last place you saved and that one's a little awkward to where we actually want to save because if we go from the shelter that we just passed right now, which we're going to save in a little bit because we're going to come back after meeting pebbles, also here's a representation of the five basic karmas that we are sending and crossing ourselves out from. We won't worry about that too much. Um, and it just wasn't faster than getting another echo that we're going to pass by anyway and save next to anyway, given how cycle timers work and how we're going to be going pretty long this next coming cycle to the point where we have to save anyway before we actually get all the way to looks to the moon going too fast that's fine though just doesn't grab the pole correctly all right so pebbles is going to rip the neuron out of our stomach because he's too impatient to let us spit it out ourselves and then he's just going to talk to us, and we don't care at all what he has to say, really. For the most part, he's just going to say, I'm going to use a little bit of the stuff that's in here to help myself, and then I'm going to help you help Looks to the Moon, which is the other character we're going to see a bit later, who's having a lot much more of a rough time than Pebbles is right now, where both of them are basically giant supercomputers. This is usually the break point of the run, because we can't do anything at this point. Mm. Something about ancient lore. All right, so stuff to talk about. The crossing yourself out. Basically, respawning this game is canon, where if you die, you go down in karma. If you live and survive a cycle, you go up in karma, and everyone's stuck in cycles and the five basic karmas that you start with. And each time you meet an echo, or this guy Pebbles is gonna help us, in a second, we get our maximum karma to go up, and we want to get to the X karma so that we can ascend from the world, essentially, and no longer get respawned, essentially, and the cycle ends, and you no longer come back. And then we go to the Void Sea and actually leave ourselves, which we will see that at the end of the run. And the big thing about these iterators is they're, they were set here by the ancients who are no longer around to help ascend the entire world. And the ancients were like, well, we don't want to deal with it. You giant robots, will you'll figure it out. Um, the newsflash was that they didn't. And this guy tried to ascend himself, failed miserably, and hurt his supercomputer neighbor which is who we're going to go see and help out. Obviously, Pebbles is still a standing building, comparative to her building. 
as we will see. Also, one thing to note that's different from the base game is that at right now it is currently raining, but because we're so high up in the clouds and inside of a building, um, we don't have rain, but we do have nighttime, which we now notice with the change in palette that we are currently looking at. And I think it's a very, very interesting change. Now it makes a lot of areas look that don't have rain naturally. All right. So now we're gonna save here. We have a popcorn for next cycle. And then this next cycle is gonna be one of the hardest in the artist in the run where we're going to be going from here back into the wall back into chimney back down all the way to industrial and then shaded is the idea that we're trying to get here i'm going to put this in my stomach now so i don't forget these iterators are <laughs> these iterators are ridiculously resilient constructs yes this is a story percent run all of this is all objectives yes with the DLC on, which we could consider the story run. After the echo, what do you mean? Also, the going back to lore stuff, the echoes are some of the ancients. They are the ancients that had too much of an ego to properly ascend, and so they forever exist just in their particular locations. Not underhang shaded? No. No one wants to do that. And it's, as far as everyone's aware, is much slower. Even though we go through so many more regions. Because right now, we're technically next to Shaded. But if we go through all of the other regions, it's just so much faster to get the Shaded. Because all we're doing is going downwards and jumping off a cliff repeatedly in controlled fashion. It's much faster than grappling across the entirety of the bottom of Underhang and then down the leg and then through memory crypts to finally make it to Shaded Citadel, which is the idea of how and where we're going in this cycle. Might be useful. Won't discount that. Chances are very low that it would be a good idea. We just need to fall. Right now, what we're doing is just we're making sure we're falling down in particular locations. Don't you need the echo? I don't care about the echo. We could get the echo, um, but I'm getting the shaded echo. I think that echo is slower. My spears went over there. I'm gonna go get it. This guy's a little in the way. Okay, that's fine. Three more white lizards. I only see one. Got my spear back? Thank you. I think because we killed some earlier, they didn't respawn. Every time you kill something, there's a chance for them to respawn. There's also a chance for them to lineage into a new creature every time they respawn. It's a 50% chance, I'm pretty sure, for Hunter. It's different for every character. Every time you personally kill them. I've paid off the singing at stream debt, so have bread. Amazing. Don't feel like you have to put all your points into it. Just save it for bread. No water time. We're doing things. The white lizard there. 75% complete the challenge. Mmm, bread. Alright. Oh, I didn't actually mean to save here. That's fine. I wasn't thinking about it. I was thinking about bread. But also, it's probably good that we save here because the cycle was really bad. Um, now that I'm looking at it. And it won't affect the run by any means. Because we get all extra food here. I'm just thinking about other runs right now. 
other routes, because normally we kind of save there. But that'll be helpful if we mess up here in Chimney. And food is plentiful anyway. Insert Bob Ross quote. There are no accidents. Is that the quote? <laughs> I know it's not the quote, but I don't remember what the quote is. Alright, just making our way down. I could talk about the movement for quite a while, but at the end of the day, it's just making it work that matters. But also, we have no resources because I used them all to move fast. Basic idea. Pelted by pups. Don't worry about it. There is a king vulture above us. Okay. This room can be trouble, so I'm trying to pay attention here. Okay. Everyone decided to leave as I got here. Hello. How's it going? Thank you for the spear back. Hello, white lizard. Let's wait. Bide our time. This isn't a situation I want to go forward in. They don't know. Alright. Works out. Drop wig in the ceiling? Nope. Okay, we're good. A lot of threats going down in chimney, but at the end of the day, it goes very, very fast. So you need to know what can and can't happen. That just comes with experience and understanding the game. Like the particular location I stood there is extremely safe because no creature just paths there and nothing can really see you. And if something does come to you, you can just hit it off the edge. It's pure refund? No. Chimney and vultures are anonymous and all this, yes. We're not in a, a room long enough to the point where that matters. Thank you for the... Well, hello, Nihilism. Hello. Hello, Captain Radiator. Welcome. If you have questions about video game, please ask. This fall is annoying. That's fine. So, Vulture. Here. This is bad. Thank you for the follow. Bruce... A big boy. Okay. We're recording things and doing commentary. Let's go down. Did bird watcher today? I realized I could just use the echo to kill them all. I forgot that's a way to do that. But you also start next to a grub in a decent room you can fight them in. The fastest way to do it is literally just have them come down. In the first room, you can summon them with a grub and then fight them all there. There's also all of the explosive spears that you spawn next to. And the nuke perk that you could bring. Alright, we're going to be entering Shaded Citadel here. We've already blasted our way through Industrial. It's not too much of a problem. And then it's a point where there's just no creatures that show up. Um, scavengers was the only thing I was kind of looking out for being in the way. But I hate fighting vultures. It's more annoying... That they run away. Yeah. First thing to stun lock them right. You always want two spears. Will we use a passage? We're playing Hunter Plasma. We don't we can't use passages. Um normally in other speedruns we'd be able to use passages to teleport, essentially. To previous shelters we've already been to. And passages are essentially like rewards for your certain play styles. Which we should have two right now, Nomad and probably Survivor. Just for the stuff that we've done. Also, one thing to note this background here, the light background all the way in the back, what didn't used to be there. Some base game areas got added the fourth layer. Or was it fifth layer? I don't remember which one. I'm not one that makes rooms. 
I just play a video game? I need to eat something, just remember. Like an onion. Yes. Uh, with the purple lizard down here. And get in our way. It's going to be dark going forward. There's also going to be spiders. There's one. He's dead now. I'm going to eat him. This one's particularly a troublemaker because it's a spitter spider. It can spit at you and hit you with maggots that'll put you to sleep. Um, now that they've changed how everything works, we're going to see Blue Flash. Now that they've changed how everything works with how spiders visually look like. Okay. Um, it can be much harder to see them than usual. The blue flash that I did there from a flashbang instantly kills all spiders in the room, except for the spitter spiders. Even the semi-large ones. There's kind of... There's these... Alright. There's these really small ones that I'm trying to say that usually aren't an issue. But they can be. Depending on the situation. Where if they get aggroed too much they can just pile up and kill you. We can't see anything because we don't naturally glow. So we just gotta hope we don't run into them and then we need to react to them immediately if they have piled up around us. I don't actually know how to say the name Cirrus, but thank you for the help. I don't want to say it entirely wrong. Bunch of tiny spiders make giant centipede spider. If we go fast enough and we just react immediately, it'll work out just fine. We need to save in this shelter. This was the ultimate goal shelter. And then we need to then hit the echo in the area and we'll be brought back. It's really good that we saved there because we didn't get a good cycle timer on either time. So on the, if you see in the bottom left, there's kind of a Mercedes Benz sig signal. And then for a little bit, it showed a bunch of small dots around it. The small dots are 20 seconds each. And they'll count down slowly until the rain is here. And each cycle timer is random. We just have to deal with it when things happen. Do you have the roll button? Yes, I do have the roll button. So I don't know if you missed the whole thing. You now have to have a button that... You need to leave immediately, and it'll give us a text box. You have to have a button that locks your keyboard, so you can no longer do keyboard inputs, because keyboard will always override the controller inputs. So basically, the keyboard will now become a controller and nothing else. All right, we've hit the last echo. We're at our X karma. Um, does, do what I say make sense? I can kind of go through it with you when we get the chance. But I have to press my um, minus key on my numpad to turn it on and off. Also makes it so I can have either keyboard or controller inputs on command which can be useful. But also makes it so when I tab out of the game, I have to turn it off and on constantly. This is Shaded Bridge. Looks are deceiving. Many people have died here. This is Flows, yes. The song that's playing. Very classic. We don't run into any new songs. Which is unfortunate. However, there is a... Um, new change to how the music works. That being it doesn't get as interrupted as it usually would in gameplay. You have it to F4? Makes me scared of Alta 4 for no reason. Just don't have it on F4. <laughs> I am many people. What did I say? Oh, the <laughs> Shaded Bridge. Normie 4. Put it on the numpad. See, you have literally no reason to press it. 
We're in Shoreline, the second to last area of the game we're going to be in. All the way to the right is Looks to the Moon, which is the last character we need to bring this Neuron to. We're only going to go in there for a second and throw the Neuron. It's going to revive her because she's actually dead currently. That bridge is scary. It is. Shaded bridge. Only, like, it's the first area that you really run into that makes you really think about um, platforming. Also, when it comes to this game, to explain it, the game is open world. You can go to between any regions that you want to. However, there's generally a more common path that people take. Given how the game leads you in certain directions with the helper character. Didn't mean to stab that guy, but that's fine. Probably will work out in our favor. There's a King Vulture there. Very rare for them to show up. I'm not even going to deal with that. Uh, unfortunately, the Jetfish came in here because I'm not carrying him back out. Why are you both in here? <laughs> I think they're scared of the... Scared of the King Vulture. Alright, he took the, the dead body. I need to grab one of them. So they can carry us fast. That's actually okay. What's she doing there? You mind, like, not being underwater for no reason? <laughs> Interesting. Alright, let's get out of here. Let's stop dealing with whatever that is. I haven't really seen them just, like, purposely stun themselves for being underwater. Swimming is also different from base game with the DLC now that you no longer naturally float up in the water however the snaking motion is still the fastest motion that's unfortunate the jellyfish shocked me can you let me grab you friend thank you i lost my spear but it was worth it i totally didn't go under anger straight to wall by accident yes i mean i did that too i actually went to chimney after and then went all the way to sub before ever finding five bubbles. Alright. Now there are one last little scare here. Is that there are scavengers in here and they don't like us as hunter. So we need to make sure we don't do anything stupid. Uh, however, now we're safe now that we're up here. So not even going to worry about it. Alright, we're ending up right next to Moon here. The aid eating guy speedruns? You mean Gourmand? Yes. That was the first run submitted, actually. Hasn't been approved yet, because it's hard to look over everything. Alright, and we're now good to leave. She's getting revived. We don't need to see the whole animation. It's quite a big deal that this is happening, but we're not going to worry about it, really. Does anyone really bother with Gord? Yes. Um, very much yes. A lot of people saying things. I can't read everything. Lol. At this point, we are go good to finish the game. It's go mode. I am going my mode. I need to eat a little bit more. Before we can actually save. 
Monk has nothing, I'm pretty sure. What does that mean? Monk has more story than Survivor, Habor. And you already know that. If that's what you're saying. Nobody cares to run Monk? We're running Monk for Cape Retrieval. Monk actually is going to matter now. Don't speak to my child that way. Monk's one of the easy mode characters. So it depends for people. Alright, we're taking our jetfish man to help us swim in these next areas. Also, I think the rain is coming. I was always going to save here anyway, but this just works out so much better. Adding a, a cute cameo in Rivulet Ending. Why would Moon have her cape and two neurons? The rain is coming. Alright. Now we're going to be entering the last area of the game, Subterranean. As we've said. And it'll be us running to there, and then... Finishing out the run in depths. We're going to save one more time. Right at the beginning of Subterranean. Because Subterranean is another difficult area. Fish must be so confused, he'll deal with it. Um, one thing about the fish is that in Subterranean, it's a lot of... Not water, essentially. But we can still use the fish if we slide with him like this. It sends us really far for some reason. So we're going to use that to our advantage. Because video game is cool. This is the captain that's playing right now. Very nice song. Come on now. Let me climb up, Jetfish. I know you don't want to do this. Artie has the most submitted, yes. If you count Expedition especially, but also we have two people running Artie a lot. And they've submitted a lot of rooms. A lot of runs. Ooh, that's unfortunate. There's snails perfectly blockaded going through there. You notice the white dots in the bottom is my breath. Now getting concerning. I keep getting stunned. I'm gonna die now, actually. I'm surprised I got stunned so much. That's fine, though. Isn't too much of a loss. We were really far away from all of those pops, and I don't even know why they were doing it. Um, they all spawn in that room, which is why there's so many. Usually they spread out after a little bit, but we move really fast into their room before they can really move around. It's very rare to die in that kind of fashion, because that wasn't even, like, a bad place. Like, the waterfall wasn't helping, pushing me down, but... I was kind of just on the surface. They're here. This is bad. Low Kuzel. Kuzi. I don't know how to say a name with Q that doesn't have a U after it. I think that worked out. Alright. Do this again. Why don't we go over? Kind of over whatever's going on down there. The giant snail blockade. Can you tame a red lizard? Yes. You can also, as one of my friends have done, tame the red lizard that you can lineage that lives on top of 
Shoreline Tower. You know which tower. Nightcat has multiple. Nightcat has the only 100% run submitted, which is 12 hours. <laughs> it's not, Nightcat's not a proper name. Uh, it's Paincat or Inva. Or Enot. Um, their game crashed at one point, but we're probably still going to accept it. I don't know if they did one thing, however. Also, it's unfortunate I had to let go of the jetfish there, as I usually want to keep it with us going to Subterranean. I kind of want to go back and get it, just to show off something that I normally would do. Hello, Ender. You know, we're going to go back and get it, just to show off what a normal run would do. I didn't bring it because this guy was in the way. I'm gonna go back because it has to be done. It's a rare spawn lizard. Water lizard, Axel Little. That's right there. Come on. I know you can do it. Ball pounce? Actually, yeah. That probably would work there. What is this song? I don't know. I don't remember all the name songs. I think this is new, though. Now it's always it's always existed, but it's new here. All right, we're entering subterranean. We didn't eat food, but it's fine. It's new to being there, isn't it? Pretty sure it's not always there. That was the thing you're not sure they did. What was the thing they're not sure they did? I don't know if they ate a neuron. To glow. Because it wasn't on their list. Alright, we're getting a visual bug right now. That doesn't always happen. Oh, goodness. There's a scavenger there. A, this is the graphics module crashing. These things happen. What is this saint? Saint is here. Who did not get 100%? It's Gorilla who did it, pretty sure. They did it, they streamed it on Twitch. We haven't approved the run yet. We haven't approved a lot of runs yet, because we've had to set some stuff up. They took all the spears, so I can't get by and eat that popcorn. Throw it, I dare you. Please don't get stuck in there, jetfish. I have rocks, but I need a spear to open the popcorn to get the food I need. This is a little risky, but I'm gonna take the time to actually get the food I need. while this visual glitch is happening. It'll go away as soon as we properly save. What? Why did that work like that? I don't know why I got stunned from such a small fall and then it didn't throw the rocks. It was a hard stun too. Hello, Neo Kevlar. Who do you speak most community? I don't know what kind of question that is. And that's not something I can really answer either. Alright, we're gonna make sure we have a spear with us. 
Yes, human gorilla. We're gonna do this again. These things happen where scavengers can kind of mess up your run. We're gonna have a spear though, so we don't have that kind of issue. There's no good place to eat on the way, really. We could have just ran the whole way. But that is really not what we want to do. Um, also, there's a lot of people that have done really, really good things for the community. Whether people really realize it or not. And community is a very loose term. That doesn't really make sense. Slug kittens, who is that answer? Yes. It's, yes. You have to give context about what you're actually asking. Our lizard man decided to be over here this time. Let's do wall pounce. Wasn't really wall pounce what we got there. Do wa water boost while holding a jet fish? I don't know, and I feel like all it would do is just drain your air, not really help. Alright, let's not make any more stupid mistakes. We're still gonna be much under my estimate of 120, 115. given how good everything else has gone. But that was a, a not good death. Still going to account one of those happening one way or the other. I expected to rock that man repeatedly. As you die loads and so. It's better to die there than right next to depths, though. Which is why we're going for the save. There's a drop wing on the ceiling, that's rare. What got me into speedrunning? Um, I'll answer that in a little bit. That's mine. You can't have that. Your usefulness has ended upon being alive. Alright. So now that we've gone through the entire torture that was me going out of my way to get the jetfish, <laughs> which kind of resulted in me getting killed because of it, it was worth it. Because we now we get to show what the jetfish does after we save here. Alright, so what me got me into speedrunning is I played Ori in the Blind Forest at a really, really high level. And when Definitive Edition came out, on Xbox, because I played on Xbox because I didn't have a PC at the time. Um, I was one of the first three people to complete one life mode, and I was the first person to complete one life mode 100%. Okay, centipedes are concerning, but that's fine. Here's the big thing about the jetfish. Kind of just pretend everything isn't there. Dropwig is going to die. Best part about the jetfish being dead is that it doesn't matter for any of the stuff we're doing. And we can still use it for bait as well for the dropwigs. We usually use other strats if we don't have the jetfish, but I like to use the jetfish because it makes the movement really interesting and it is actually faster at the end of the day. Use it for bait. Quite well. You got a problem, centipede?
think it does have a problem. All right. Get out of my hands. Okay. Keep going. Another victim. That should be all of them. Pick this one. That one's a classic. Alright. We're almost at the end of the jetfish's usefulness. But I think that worked out very well. Let's go up top. So this, we're hearing the giant scissor noises below us. Oh, I probably could have made that jump next time. Um, there are Miros birds below us, which are very scary enemies that we just don't even want to deal with. We have the jetfish as a sacrifice, though. Spider is a little concerning, but that's all right. Ooh, haven't seen this lag in the DLC yet. It's likely because the Miros bird's glitching into a wall. We're down to five FPS, as Steam is telling me. I just need to move out of this area as fast as I can. It's very common for it to happen in this area. I just haven't had it happen with the DLC yet, given how loading has completely changed. Okay. My FPS improved. Jetfish is no longer useful for us in these tight and closed spaces, so we're no longer going to use it. We're a bit out of the Miros bird area at this point, so I'm not going to worry about it as much. I hear a centipede. We need to be aware of its location. Is it the red one? Go into the pipe. I dare you. Come on. I need you to do this for me. Just this one little thing. Just for me. You would, you would help out a friend, wouldn't you? It's a normal centipede. Unless I stabbed a broken area. Seems to be a little having a little bit of trouble here. So now because this is DLC, we're going through filtration, but filtration's had a lot of changes to it. So we're going to be running it through some new rooms here. Hence why we normally wouldn't run into the centipede here either. The small lizard might help us out. He has. Very cool. Small lizards can't see anything, but they can hear you quite well. Thank you. Okay, centipede killed one of them. Nice. Okay. Just paying attention to make sure we don't mess up. We're very, very close to the end. Thought so. Three, two, one, out. Okay, just making sure. we. So with the map, we can see things that are around us. Showing with little icons, so half cycle, doing good on time. I'm going to use that on some situations to help us out. These lizards are acting a little strange. 
They're all going for that spider though, so I suppose it makes sense. A little scary. We're on the last room of the game with actually enemies on it right now. All right. Ooh. All right, we did good. There's nothing else that can kill us except me falling straight down this pipe and dying to fall damage. Let's not do that because we've had the game lag enough times to drop inputs today. <laughs> Alright, we're in depths. There's no enemies here. There's one last pit I can fall down that we can die. But otherwise, this is platforming land. Messed up some movement, so I had to try to do some other things. This place is very dark. That's okay for us. We know exactly what we're doing. And there'll be lights coming from the ceiling. One thing I suggest is putting a filter over everything to make everything brighter. I have not done that just yet, however. Because at least I can know where everything is, but maybe not everyone else watching does. So at this point, we've gained all of our karma. We've gone deeper and deeper down into the temples. We have a giant cancer in our stomach slowly consuming us. Till we find that we can leave the world entirely and come down here where the ancients danced their silly rituals and I did one of the harder movement tech of the game on a whim uh, it's, a, it's almost frame perfect two inputs to do the back throw like I did Ooh, messed up that jump, that's fine Am I going to do another run after this one? Yes. I plan to do... Riv again. All right, here are the Guardians. If we don't have the X Karma, they kill us. That's the extent of their usefulness. They work as a gate, essentially. It's like as a placed creature. In our case. to see the gutter. The gutter is a cool place. Alright. Big part about this is being able to use your items at particular locations, as well as a bunch of smaller movements. I actually don't want to be rolling like that, but I didn't have a good point where I could jump out. fish for set personally. When do we run that? Landfish. Baller. Ballin. This point, talking about any specific thing we might have missed in the run. I kind of say through a lot of stuff, but if you're doing stuff with commentary, things always happen. There's more to talk about. Uh, MSC added the five new, technically six, because there's a secret to suck at. And very, very interesting. This is not one of the 
the new Slugcats, however. This is the base, one of the base game Slugcats. The faster and stronger one, of course, but doesn't have the kind of powers that each of the new ones have. As each one has specific power. And that'll be some of the other submissions. Specifically Riv, like I'm gonna do in a bit. Big Fish Man. Alright, time is coming soon. Time will be when we enter the next screen. We'll get about a, a 50. Alright, time is then. However, we're gonna keep going until we make it all the way to the the full credits ending. For time, it's still to here. Now, this was a pretty average run. Obviously, we wouldn't want that. We probably lost 10 minutes. Second cat I've ever seen ascend after Pain Cat. You first one you've seen ascend was Pain Cat? Huh? Invisible on this screen. We can see it though. It's one hour, eight minutes, 47 seconds. Andre Bassern about Artie's children. How do they end up there? I don't believe they had Max Carmen. Yeah, I don't understand that either. That's what Gorilla said too. I wasn't sure if you saw, um, when I finished. If I didn't die to those scabs, this would have been like a really, really good run. But every run's gotta have that one mistake. I'm still gonna have this at 115, hour 15, hour 20 estimate. Very good. We gotta show this ending. Because nobody knows what's going on. Nope, we gotta go all the way. We gotta show everything. And if we can't, and they just cut off at true time, uh, that's fine too. That's why I add so much time on the estimate, generally. Much extra time. Still wonder what these worms are? Does it matter? That's the question we should ask ourselves. Ouroboros creature. There's a lot of them, though. It's not a single one. Like some people like to think. Alright, we're just swimming as fast as we can, doing a snaking motion, pressing jump at a very particular timing. But, uh, there's nothing to really explain what's going on from this point on, outside of it's just happening. So, um, don't consider this ending to be any part of the game, or at least how you should take the game. But it is very... It takes you places. It makes you feel things. Everything that was ascended, I mean, maybe you're right. A little wild. The media culture really knows. Do you think they even know? Does it even matter? Let's be honest. Let's really be honest here. Because what I've learned from game development, it does, it literally doesn't matter. It just needs to be cool and make enough sense. We're going to turn the game down because it's super loud. Jerry. For this game in particular, all right. No screen shake here is funky. I like this with no screen shake. It's a lot easier to see. It's one of the remix settings that they added with the DLC. No screen shake, a lot less loud in some places. Who's about the Guardians? Seem like all are. The Guardians are the only part that don't really make sense because you feel like they would have been written about somewhere 
Like, those are, like, 100% something people have seen before. There's no way people have seen the Guardians and just didn't say anything about them. But how do you, how do you, like, write an account for that? How do you write an account for that? Like, find a pearl somewhere that's just like, I wish all the guardians, blah, 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 blah. Up the sub pipe. What you see, you need to have a bat fly abstracted on both ends of a spear. And then when you bring one spear through a pipe, it brings the other one through a pipe. And if it's connected to a guardian, every time you go through a pipe with it, it has a chance to push you out of bounds. Which then allows you to go all the way up. First found a bird sea. I mean where was where would that pearl be? How would that work? Should be talked about more. Never learned about tech. Low Cerilith. We're finishing up the run here. Heading towards the end. It's a lot to say, but there's nothing to say. A lot more versions of us after our long journey. Are they different slug cats? Are they our past lives? Who knows? Does it really matter? So slug cats always match your played avatar? No. Well, your your current character that you're playing as, they're always gonna look at it. I'm not not the three D model, if that's what you're saying. All right, we're almost there. And the full time is here. And then we see the end cutscene and then credits. And that's everything. 70, 75 minutes, which is about what we got. Do those swing sprites say such an, yes, the other sprites are always exactly the same. Same. Nano Ferret is streaming. If you want to see Saint, the end of Saint, the part that you don't want to see, um, they're doing that right now. And specific Hunter cutscene. They're getting taken by the cancer. And something else happens that I still don't fully understand. Does it bring them back all the way? When they were originally created? Visual of the Rot leaving them. Is that what's happening? Why would NSH be there? Literally why? <laughs> Literally why would they show NSH there? That's the point that's like... Huh? Alright, we did good. Time 45. We died a few times. Don't mind us, my friend, as a permit. Yes. Alright, that is the run. Thank you all for watching. Slug Cat is the outlier. <laughs>